Welcome, my friends. You're listening to the voice of the Eternal Gospel, a program brought to you by the Eternal Gospel Ministry, founded in 1992 by Seventh day Adventist believers. This is a Christian program dedicated to bring you the prophetic fulfillment, warning, and revelations of the end times, and to promote the advancement of Christ in your life. Welcome again, my friends, to the voice of the eternal gospel. I'm Pastor Rafael Perez, and I'm inviting you to pray with us. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you again because you've been giving us this great opportunity to be called into thy service into such a time like this. Help us, O oh Lord, to develop through the power of your Holy Spirit in our life the mind of our Lord in Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Okay, Pastor Barry and my brother Patrick, how about if we can kind of summarize in maybe a couple of minutes uh, the previous program and that way we can continue with, because I would like to, if it's possible, to uh, get into, uh, because this group of people will be doing something that uh, the majority of the people who are not going to be doing. The group of people described in Revelation 14, the 144,000, they're going to be uh, showing an experience of giving glory to God. And my question will be, how can we give glory to God when the Bible says that we have no glory? But we will get, it, get into that. We, we answered that in our <laughs> previous lecture, uh, pre previous program, but mm -hmm. what we're looking at here is the issue that Yes, they're going to give glory to God. Mm -hmm. But how are they going to do this? They're going to do this by the fact that they're first, first and foremost, they've understood what it, we've been talking about, how Jesus is going to put away death and mm -hmm. sin. Mm -hmm. And we ask the fact that, that Christ, how Christ took upon our nature, right? Mm -hmm. So when he took on our nature, he took upon man's nature 4,000 years after the fall of man, all mm -hmm. right? And he, and he overcame sin in a sinful flesh, but never yielded to sin by a thought or by, a, by or yield to the habit or the bent to sin, mm -hmm. all right? But now let's go one more step because the Bible said he had become sin for us who knew no sin. And we found out that Jesus was now going to take on the sins of the whole world. We found out that he was, by bearing the sins of the whole world, he would experience the second death. We went to uh, Psalms, I mean, uh, Matthew 27, 46, and Matthew 27, 46 told us something. What does it say there? That's what we... Mm -hmm. My the, God, my God, why my hast God, thou forsaken me? My God, why hast thou forsaken me? Mm -hmm. Now, most people just think that Jesus is just crying out, but Jesus is actually experiencing a separation from God. Mm -hmm. Go with me to Isaiah 59, 1 and 2, yeah. and let's think of what Isaiah 59, 1 and 2 had to say. Yeah. In Isaiah chapter 59, verses 1 and 2, the Bible said, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save, mm -hmm. neither is ear heavy that he cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, yeah. mm -hmm. and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. Mm -hmm. Your sins have what? Separated. Separated. What did God do with Jesus on Calvary? He laid on him the iniquity of us all, Isaiah 53, 6. Mm -hmm. As a result of laying him iniquity of all, Christ will become sin for us. And this sin demanded what? A separation from God. Wow. Mm -hmm. And what was Jesus experiencing? The separation from God that the sinner will feel. What is the second death in reality? It's not just dying again. It's you experiencing the separation from God. And this time it's eternal. Mm. No more for God's presence to call you. No more for mercy to plead in your behalf. No more the benevolence of God uh, being brought out even when you've been doing wicked things. He still mm -hmm. tried to turn around and bless you because the rain falls on the just and the what? Unjust. Mm -hmm. But now God's, now the issue will be finally clear. Mm. Yes. I thought nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God. Nothing will separate us from the love of God but sin. For, sin right. will separate us. I was going to say for those who have Accept Christ in the heart. No, nothing will separate us from us. Right, and Paul mm -hmm. was bringing up. When Paul brings this out, he's bringing. He's assuming that you understand that righteousness mm -hmm. is free from sin, based mm -hmm. on Romans six eighteen. Being then made free from sin, you became servants of righteousness. Mm -hmm. yes. So servants of righteousness who've been made free from sin and who are not practicing and keep sinning and repenting, but putting away sin by the grace of God and by the indwelling of His Spirit, they, nothing will separate them from the love of God, separate us from the love Amen. of God Amen. in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's what it's talking about. 
And so when we go back to what Christ experienced in the what? The second death. Mm -hmm. How do you know what's the second death? Separation from God. If Jesus had actually died the second death, mm -hmm. that means Christ could not be resurrected. Because the wage of sin is death. Wages is what you earn. Second death. And listen carefully. Wages is what you what? Earn. Mm -hmm. Jesus did not earn the wages of sin mm -hmm. because he never sinned. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the sins were laid on him mm -hmm. so he would pay the penalty as a lamb without spot or blemish. He would pay the penalty for our sins, but he would not die the second death in reality because if he died the second death, he could not be resurrected from the grave. But he did not sin, therefore he did not die the second death, but he did pay the penalty for sin and, the de and he died the first death that every man had received by coming into this world. Mm. Now, if you don't believe that, then go back with us a little closer for a moment. Look here, Isaiah 59 says what? He, is, he said he became what? Sin for us. Mm -hmm. Okay, look at verse 2. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Your iniquities. Whose iniquities? Man's iniquities. But did Jesus have iniquity? The way did the Bible say, who, do, who knew no sin, neither was there God found in his mouth, who he did know what? Iniquity. If he didn't know no sin, Jesus didn't do iniquity. So how did Jesus get the victory over this? He got the victory through the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. He did not use his own divinity. If he did, then he's not our example, and we all... Could, are just going to be saved because why, why do we have coward? We don't need coward. Yeah. Now, if somebody will say, okay, if Jesus, you know, took my iniquities, then I don't have to do anything because then he will save me. My, me. My, my sins Jesus, was upon him. Jesus takes your iniquities. On, the provision for salvation has been made. But Jesus cannot, Jesus does not arbitrarily take your iniquities without you coming to him and accepting him as your Lord and Savior. If that was not true, then we don't need the plan of salvation and we don't need Jesus as a Savior. Mm -hmm. Because in order to have a Savior, you must see your need for Christ in your life. Mm -hmm. You must make a complete surrender of your will. This is why the Bible mm -hmm. says, following him, they follow him where, wheresoever he goeth. Right. And another thing too, those who will not will overcome sin in their life or will die you know, un, with unrepented sin, at the end, who is going to be paying but the price for those sins? They're going to pay the price they, for their they, own they sin. They, 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 they're because going to pay the, for themselves, the, right? Because, right, because... The, the, the second death. Right, because the wage of sin is what? Okay. Death. death. And what is second death? Mm -hmm. Separation from God. But at the same time, what is second death? It is permanent mm -hmm. death to the point you don't have resurrection anymore. Going to the type mm -hmm. and the Old Testament, uh, the, the life goat, the sins of the people that already were participating in the atonement. But the one that did not participate in the atonement, they were being cut, cut off. off. They were cut off. They, 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 they so. carry their own punishment. <laughs> Likewise, in this end time, that's why the, the, the teaching that we don't have to do anything, that Jesus did everything for me in the yeah. cross. It, it, it's such a, um, you know, deceptive. It's a deception because Jesus did everything for me as long as I accept that offer on my life. And with each promise, there is conditions. The condition is if you, you cannot come to me unless if you receive what? A new birth. It, it, isn't, isn't that... What is said to Nicodemus? He said, unless you be born on the water and the spirit, you cannot be partaking of my kingdom. It was not, those words were not just for Nicodemus. Yeah. It's for each one of us. Yes. At the same time, he said, if any man come unto me, I will in no wise cast out. Mm -hmm. So we, have to, go to, we have to come to him as we are for that gift of forgiveness of sins and a new heart and a new spirit. Okay, amen. And by the way, the plan of salvation has not changed because in Hebrews chapter uh, 12, 8, the Bible says what? 13, 8. The Hebrews 13, 8 says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, okay. today, and forevermore. Okay. The plan of salvation has not changed. The way to get to heaven, the way we must go, and the way we must, the, the conditions for us to make it is still the same. God has not given us no, uh, given us anything, has not changed in any regard. And therefore, those who are trying to change it or trying to make another way, Jesus called them both thieves and robbers. <laughs> I was thinking about that, John chapter 10. That's right. Yeah. And so when we deal with Jesus being, being faced the second death, 2 Corinthians 5, 21 said what? Mm -hmm. For he has made him to be what? 
uh, sin for us who knew no sin. Mm -hmm. So Christ, when Christ died on Calvary, though the sins had been laid on him, sin for us, he himself had knew no sin. Mm -hmm. Therefore, after three days, he claimed that he would be resurrected from the grave. And the Bible says, if Christ be not raised, then your faith is in vain, mm -hmm. and you're yet of your sins. And we of all men are most miserable. Yeah. But Christ has now become the first fruits of them that slept. Mm -hmm. And as Christ was risen from the grave, so shall we be risen from the grave. Mm -hmm. The Bible said, by one man sin came into the world, and death by sin. And by man came also the resurrection of life. Yeah. And because Jesus rose from the grave, we will be resurrected from okay. the grave. And when we rise from the grave, there'll be no more what? Death. Because our sins have went, to, went beforehand the judgment, they were forgiven, pardoned, and blotted out. And yeah. our sins were later transferred to the originator of sin, the one who brought death upon the planet, the mm -hmm. one who deceived Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, the one who's brought temptation upon the earth and has slain the people with a continual stroke mm -hmm. for almost 6,000 years, the devil and his angels, the devil mm -hmm. himself. And he will pay his own penalty. He will burn longer than anybody else, but he will be brought to ashes mm -hmm. along with the rest of the wicked. Look what the Bible says here in Hebrews for a minute, just to give you an idea, because remember, when we talked about this in Revelation 20, it says for the, it talks about here, we have an altar, Revelation 13, I mean, Hebrews 13, 10 through 13. Listen, we have an altar whereof they, that they have no right to eat, which serve the tabernacle. For the bodies of those beasts, the bodies of those what? Beasts, beasts. mean those sacrifices, Animals. whose blood was brought into the sanctuary, whose blood was brought where? Into showing the that the blood was transferred from the outer court into the sanctuary itself through, the, through sprinkling. Mm -hmm. It says here, into the sanctuary by the high priest for what? For, for sin, sin are burned without the camp. What was burned without the camp? The bodies of the animals mm -hmm. and above all, the, uh, and they're burned where? Without the camp. It says, wherefore, outside Jesus, the camp. Outside the camp. Outside. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might what? Sanctify, Sanctify. the people, was, it says, with his own blood suffered without the gate. Right. When he su suffered out the gate, means he suffered in the outer court. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. No, outside, outside the, the, outside the camp. Outside yeah. the camp. Okay, I want you to get it. But outside of Jerusalem, if you're going to go there, mm -hmm. it says, "Let us go therefore." Well, well uh, and outside of heaven, right? It, it, this earth would it be like the the the, 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 the earth, uh, outer court? Earth would be the outer court, right? right. Okay. But at the same time, he's suffering outside of Jerusalem, mm -hmm. outside of the gate, outside of the outer court. Okay, okay? if you want to go there. Look carefully. It says, let us go therefore, go forth therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his what? Yeah. Reproach. His reproach. For, okay, but now, the thing I want to bring up here is, what happened? They were suffered, Jesus suffered without the camp. Mm -hmm. When the wicked are destroyed, they're going to be destroyed without the what? Camp. They're mm -hmm. going to be destroyed outside the holy city. Mm -hmm. That's what Revelation 20, minor. and why would they be destroyed? Because they would not give their sins to Jesus, nor accept them as a personal savior. So why does it say, let us therefore go, let us th go forth therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach? Well, why don't we, I, I tell you, we'll pick up right there as soon as we watch this. Can't we be right back. Paul and Jesus both predict that the church of God becomes a force against God. The radical faith that Jesus taught had become the official religion of the empire that murdered him. The speed with which the early church tobogganed into apostasy will take your breath away. Welcome back. My brother Patrick, I'm sorry, I cut you off just before the break. Well, I was asking, why does Paul say, let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp bearing his reproach? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and you, were going, you were going to tell us why. Well, <laughs> in, in, I believe in Revelation 18, 4, which is the mm -hmm. uh, call of God, it says, I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins. Mm -hmm. and that you receive not of her plagues. Mm -hmm. When 
God's people come out of Babylon, which is the fallen church systems, for them it's like, and for all of us who have done so, it is like coming outside the camp, meeting Jesus outside the camp, mm -hmm. bearing his reproach, because the wor because Jesus was made to look like the worst heretic in the church, mm -hmm. the worst criminal in the state. He was mm -hmm. crucified between two thieves, and the same thing will happen to God's people as they come to him outside the camp. They will be made to look just like Elijah, the worst criminal in, <clears throat> criminal in the state and the worst heretic in the church. That's right. And, uh, and that was taking place while the church and state were united, getting uh, united. Yeah. Uh, That's the reason that we have to keep the warning up. We have to be careful. Every time we see the church trying to unite with a secular government, pay attention to those things. That's not good. That's the false church uniting with the state. Or the church is trying to find, uh, get the uh, influence from the state. To uh, That is, they do that trying to get the favor from the government to implement their doctrines and their teachings. Yes. And that's when persecutions come to the very few, to the women. I want to bring out the fact, why is this bearing without the camp? Bearing without the camp is the experience of the 144,000. Mm -hmm. It's the experience of every church, true Christian. Mm -hmm. How do we know? Let's go here for my Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Matthew 16, 24, Mark 8, 34. Let's, let's read it from the life of the, the four Gospels and we'll see. The, the, let's look at three of those four. Matthew 16, 24. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Okay, Brother Patrick, please. Then, should, then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. You cannot come out of Babylon. You cannot come out of the confusion that's taking place in the churches. The world-loving churches. The, the world-loving churches and the embracing of the worldly things that are now being made lawful in the church without really forbidden by the Word of God. You cannot do that unless you deny yourself, unless you deny your flesh and deny your own way of thinking. You've got to give your life completely to Christ and then you have to submit your mind to the Word of God. Look what it says over in Mark chapter 8, verse 34, again. Again, I'm going to keep you reading. It sounds familiar, but I want you to catch it with me. Mark 8, verse 34 says, mm -hmm. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Now remember, let us go without the camp, suffering what? Reproach. Mm -hmm. Reproach means to bear his cross. Mm -hmm. The cross of Christ is not a pleasant cross. The cross will bring reproach. It will bring opposition with the world. It will bring opposition to family members and relatives in your home. If you're really going to follow Jesus and bear his cross, must Jesus bear his cross alone and all the world go free? Wow. No, there's a cross for everyone and there's a cross for me. But bearing that cross means suffering reproach. Suffering sometimes being misunderstood by family members. Some people have made up their mind to follow Jesus and they've been cut off from their families. Hmm. Their family members, some of them have well-off families and, 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 well, and good money. Mm -hmm. And because they followed Jesus, the family member told them, the father, the mother, the uncle, the aunt, the grandfather, whoever, said, we are no, we are no longer going to support you. We're no longer going to help you do anything. And some especially have been cut off when they made up their mind to keep the Bible Sabbath as well. Uh, by even by other church so-called Christians who don't believe that the Sabbath should be binding, is not binding, and they believe in keeping Sunday. They've cut their children off in the process who kept the Sabbath. Do you remember the last sentence in the chapter in the Great Controversy, the final warning, where it says, uh, church relations, family connections are powerless to stay them now. Truth is more important than all of these. That's right. And they take their stand with the truth. So again, the issue is going to be, but they're following the lamb, where shall he go? You must follow the lamb now down here. The lamb is calling us out of Babylon. The lamb is calling us unto his righteousness. The lamb is calling us to not to worship the beast in his image. And that is the power that is actually calling us to come closer to Christ at this time. Amen. Look at Luke chapter 9, verse 23, in John 7, 17. Luke, Luke 9, 23. 23. Uh -huh. And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. And take up his cross daily and follow me. Take up his cross how? Daily. daily. So you got to follow Christ daily. It's not one time I gave my life to Jesus. Now that you got to get up every morning and deny yourself again. You got to crucify that flesh with the affections and lusts thereof. Paul said, "I die daily." Daily. That's right. So again, look at look at uh, John seven seventeen. 
John 7, 17 says, If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. So he shall know of the what? So now, not only is it denying yourself, but now you must know the doctrine. What doctrine? Where does doctrine come from? Mm. 2 Timothy 3, 16, all scripture is given by what? Inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine. So the doctrine that you must find is what is written in the scriptures. In the it is written. The Sabbath is written in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. yes. Sunday is not written in the scriptures <laughs> as a day of rest. Yes. It you, is written. You, you, the law is written to be kept. Not just you that's under law, love and grace. You're under law and grace. Wow. Grace is given to you for the power to walk in obedience to the law. But if you're going to continue to transgress, to transgress the law of God while receiving grace, Paul said, God forbid. You, you see, we walk daily. We're supposed Amen. to walk daily with Jesus Christ. Amen. But when the seven day Sabbath come, that is like a special appointment, special day. The only day in the whole Bible, by the way, uh, uh, you help me out. From Genesis to Revelation, the only day that the Bible describes as God sanctified, as God blessed, and God rested, is the seventh day Sabbath. And it's written. And it is written in the Word of God, right? Yeah, I mean, right. I mean, okay, All go right. ahead. And so now we see, so now we follow, look at Matthew 9, 9. So in order to come out of Babylon, to come out of this present world system as well, the Bible said we must do something. We must deny ourselves. Mm -hmm. We must pick up our cross and suffer reproach. We must understand sound doctrine as well. Mm -hmm. There are some people say that we don't need doctrine. That God will settle one up there. Not according to the scripture. The scripture said you need doctrine. You need sound doctrine for your feet to walk through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right? Look what it says here. And as Jesus passed forth from thence, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom. And he saith unto him, follow me. And he arose and followed Jesus. And then when he followed him, but to follow Christ means to, to, to leave all. Yeah. It also means to deny yourself. It's, so you, because in the experience of justification and sanctification, there's a death to self and sin, and there's a faith that's constantly believing God's promises and trusting in God for the power of the Holy Spirit to live right, to walk right, and to put away sin and have the victory through His righteousness. Uh, I mean, now we can understand why the Bible says that we have to go out and meet Him. Yes. Go out, out of the world, out of the Fall All these connections of wickedness confusion. in this earth. Confusion. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Come out of this confusion, yeah. religious confusion and, 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 that we see and, and, taking place. And by the way, even though in English, the word for church, but in the Greek is ecclesia. That's right. And it means in, in a called Spanish, out one. Iglesia, That's right. That's right. Which means coming out. Come you know, called out. It's a group of people that have been out, called out. It's, yeah. it's a new experience. Just follow Christ. Wow. When the rest of the world say, I don't have to obey the commandments because Jesus obeyed those for me. We say, no, no, I'm going to go and follow Jesus. The life of Jesus, the experience of Jesus, it's going to be mine. That's why he said to Matthew, Amen. follow me. But now we got to, we, we're tempted to have these people that say, well, you know, uh, we already been called out. I get, but now, but wait a minute. The Bible says come out of Babylon. Now you could be called out of the world and come into the, come into the church. But now if the church starts going astray, if the church is no longer following sound doctrine, okay. then the Bible says that just you must come out of Babylon because now you're going into a confusing situation. Yeah. Yes, you came out of the world. Yes, you gave your life to Christ. Yes, you became this new creature. But now God warns you, you must stay with sound doctrine in His Word. Amen. And when the churches veer away from sound doctrine of the Word of God, when they veer away from His commandments, then God says, come out of her and touch not the unclean thing and I'll receive you, said the Lord. Amen. Paul understood Behold, the that. bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to but, meet him. That's right. By the way, Paul understood that. 2 Corinthians 6, can we read yeah. it quickly? Go okay. ahead, please. It says, Be not uniquely yoked together with unbelievers. Mm -hmm. For what fellowship have righteousness, mm -hmm. that means victory over sin, by the way, and free from sin, mm -hmm. with unrighteousness, those who continue in sin, 1 John 5, 17, all unrighteousness is sin. Mm -hmm. And it says, In what communion have light with darkness? Mm -hmm. And what concord have Christ with Belial? Mm -hmm. Or what part have he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? Mm -hmm. For ye are the temple of the living God, 
as God has said, I dwell in them and will walk in and will, it says and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, said the Lord. It says here and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. Wow. In 18, 18 says and will be a father unto you and ye, ye shall, shall be, be my, my sons and daughters, daughters, said the Lord are almighty. Amen. So, so wait a minute. There is a condition of here that Paul brings in order for us to be part of God's people, part of God's church. What is the condition? To be separate. To be separate from sin. And have no, have no fellowship with unfruitful <laughs> works of darkness. Have no fellowship done be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Hmm. So therefore the churches that are saying that we can join with satanic groups right. and we can all still be one church, that's unfellowship with unbelievers. That's with the fellowship of works of darkness. Mm -hmm. That cannot happen. You're talking about this super church that everybody's getting may get into, emerging churches and all this <laughs> other stuff, new age teachings and spiritualism. No. The Bible says, be an unequally like yoked, come out from among them, be ye separate. No. That, that, that is a counterfeit unity. And people can argue, I know, but didn't Jesus even eat, you know, he sat down and eat, but, ate with, with, with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. But for us to talk but, like this, yeah. that means that we are part of this, uh, uh, this, this no, we're, no, we're part of these people that are these um, fundamentalists uh -huh. who are, 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 are always causing problems in the church mm -hmm. because we're calling for separation when everybody's saying let's have ecumenical unity. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, brothers and sisters, on the authority of the word of God, the yeah. word of God is not partial. The word of God is very clear about what we should do. The word of God says, come out from among them and be ye separate and touch not the unclean thing. Amen. The second angel's message says, Babylon is fallen, is fallen that great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of fornication. And the nations are drinking the wine of the wrath and they would join in a worldwide union of church and state one of these days very soon. And God is warning you, come out of her, my people, that you be not partaker of sin. My people, that's the other sheep that I have, not of this fold. And the message that we've been given here today is dealing with that very issue. Amen. Wow. We have to close today, but I know that was a good closing, so may God bless us all. Our Voice of the Eternal Gospel family thanks you for joining us. Generous contributors like you keep us broadcasting. Prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. Donations are tax deductible and can be sent to Voice of the Eternal Gospel. P.O. Box 15138, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33416. Our phone number is 1-866-7th-DAY-2. That's 1-866-784-3292. And our web address is voiceoftheeternalgospel.com. Find out what the critics are raving about. Top scholars and theologians from around the country come together to reveal the hidden history of the book of Revelation. With powerful reenactments and incredible visual effects, this 95-minute masterpiece brings to life the book of Revelation like never before. Revelation is no longer a mystery. Get your copy today.